Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation, helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo. Welcome to Kalamazoo Lively Arts, the show that takes you inside Kalamazoo's vibrant, creative community and explores the people who breathe life into the arts. I'm John Koch here at Miller Auditorium. On today's show, we stop by the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts and the Kalamazoo Public Library Central Branch to learn about new programs. But first, we take art to the extreme. We visited Western Michigan University's campus to check out the Gwen Frostick School of Arts Under Pressure Steamroller Printmaking Event. Watch the art making marathon now. What is happening in this art niche of yours, Nicole? So we put on this whole huge steamroller, large scale, epic kind of printmaking event, sort of a marathon as you've seen out there um, for our students. So it was originally a student project where uh, we're making blocks that are too large to print in our studio, although we have fantastic facilities, like amazing facilities. Um, these prints are well above and beyond our, our ability to print. So uh, we rented in what's traditionally used as an asphalt paper, paver uh, to print the prints. And uh, we invited, I mean, originally, like I said, it was supposed to be just students, but we've invited um, alumni students. So a lot of our BFAs who've graduated in the last 10 years are participating. And then we wanted to open it up to the community and the art, you know, the arts community here in Kalamazoo as well. Um, a lot of times, uh, the, the, the public doesn't get onto Western's campus so much and, and we don't have a space downtown or in the community so it was a great way to to bring in artists from all over. And you're supposed to get your fingers dirty aren't you? I have gotten them quite <laughs> dirty and this is after washing them twice so <laughs> yeah good. this is just life for the next week. Okay I'm ready to print make where do we start? <laughs> okay well we've got a relief block here we're doing very large scale printmaking today with uh, blocks that are too big to go on our regular presses so essentially people have brought in a variety of substrates to carve. This is plywood, but people are also using MDF. Um, they're using linoleum blocks and other sorts of traditional things. So essentially with, with relief blocks, everything you don't want to print, you physically carve away. You're saying relief? Block? Relief, like wood block, wood cut, relief. Yes. Like it's a relief to be done because it's so much work. <laughs> What's your take home, your takeaway from today's activity? <laughs> what do you want uh, uh, your exhaustion? audience? <laughs> uh, no, I think it was just great. I mean, you don't know how this is all going to go out. It's our first time ever doing it. It's a huge enterprise. We've been, you know, uh, planning it for about a year. And so just to watch it work, like that is so satisfying. You know, the prints are being made, the steamroller is working. All of the students are pitching in and they've been amazing. Um, we have a lot of students who are taking print classes for the first time this semester. And I mean, they've been here eight hours today. It's been awesome. Then obviously you put the ink on, on that, each individual sculpting there. Yeah. And then we, we the steamroller presses it, right? Yeah. And then the removal. What kind of reactions did you see? Oh, you get a lot of, ooh, you know, I mean, that's like, that's the prize. That makes all the rolling and the lifting and, you know, setting everything down just right worth it is that moment. It's like magic, you know, because the image is reversed from the way that you carve it too. So there's like a, a moment of recognition for each artist, you know, where they're like, oh yeah, I'm seeing my image the other way for the first time. But you can tell they're, you know, the, payoff is there for all that work. And then you hang it to dry? Yep, yep, because it's oil-based ink, so it takes a couple of days to dry. So we have a whole hanging system right now. We'll let those sit overnight, um, and then we'll probably move them up here into these studios tomorrow. Um, then we have an exhibition in a couple of weeks of Ooh. the prints, so they should be dry by then. Um, and then we're gonna try to shop it around some other you know, exhibition spaces in the next few months. Hmm. So what we're doing right now is we're getting ink on the block. 
This is already black because it's been put through the ringer one time already today, so this is its second print. So essentially, the key is to get an even, uniform coating of ink, but we're using a, a combination of small and kind of large rollers. Okay. And this is actually a brayer, but we also have larger rollers that we've been using. So what you're going to be doing mm. for, yeah. What kind of ink is this? It's an oil-based uh, relief ink, yeah, it's specifically for printmaking. We actually had all of our ink donated today by Hanko Ink, which is a, uh, an ink-making company. Nice. So that was awesome. Um, so what you're going to want to do is this is already full of ink. Let me watch you do it. And you're just going to kind of lightly roll back and forth. Really? And you want to stay in a fairly small area because you want the ink to go down heavy. You don't want to go way out. Um, and you can sort of see where you've inked. You can see the color change a little bit. We don't bit. want these to be inked? Sometimes the ink gets in there a little bit, but don't worry about it. You know, that has to do with the carving, not with the inking. So yeah, if you want to just take over. Okay, I'm left-handed. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. There you that, go. That makes, that makes a difference. All so, right. So, so boom. Yeah. Just do back I and forth, back and forth. Like you're making a pie okay. or something. Right. I don't know. I've never made a pie. Me either. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that's what it's like. How do, how do I appreciate all this talent that's been done? I think on, the, you know, on a very basic level, I think that you can look at these blocks and just see the physical effort and labor of love that kind of went into them. Some of these prints obviously took a you know, hundred hours to carve and you can, you, know, you can see that, you can see that labor. But otherwise, I mean, there's something very specific that happens with relief prints because of, especially in black, mm -hmm. where it's very graphic. And so you get these really beautiful graphic kind of high contrast images um, with a range of marks from really bold to really fine. But because of the large scale and the fact that we're driving a 6,000 pound machine over it, you can't get sort of hairline marks. You know, you have to work a little bit more high contrast, a little bolder. The Kalamazoo Institute of Arts is known for its various art exhibits, programs, workshops, and events. But did you know about their residency program? We sit down with ceramic artist Lena Thomas to hear about her work and how the KIA is propelling her career. What are you making here? Um, I'm making a skull. Uh, it's loosely based on a deer skull, but I would say it's morphed into something a little bit different. Um, it's kind of taken on like a flower shape right. and so yeah. So what are we going to do? So I'm going to show you how I use um, cloth flowers um, that are soaked in casting slip as an accent on this piece. Okay. And so I'll just first show you this is a recipe for a uh, attaching slip. It's uh, an Epsom salt solution that I pour into the casting slip and you can see it makes it kind of like thicken up right away. Right. And get really thick. So usually you have to slip and score things to attach them, but when you use this slip you don't have to mm -hmm. because it's so thick that it's just like glue. So what, I was talking to the lady in charge of the program and she said there were like 20 or 30 students that apply and only 10 get through yeah. and for ceramics it's only two so yeah. you're like one of two. How does that make you feel? Um, it's really it's encouraging because yeah there's like a lot of setbacks when you're trying to do art there's like a lot of rejection that you have to deal with so like whenever like you get like a small victory that's like anything and this is like a big big deal, like a really great opportunity, so. 
and, and, and the benefits of being in a residency program, because a lot of kids get out of school, right? And what do you do with this gift that you have? Right. What does this enable you to be able to do with that gift? Um, it enables you to like just keep working, keep doing what you love, and so you never have to stop um, because most artists have to have like a regular job and then their artistic like practice is sort of separate from that. Um, so this just gives you an opportunity to like use the equipment, the kilns, the wheels, glaze, um, everything that, I mean, you don't, if you live, like I live in an apartment, obviously like I can't have a kiln in my apartment right. running. So um, yeah, just something like this is like an awesome opportunity to be able to keep working, keep making art. Okay, so you gave me the soft piece of clay. Yeah. It's kind of chilly in here, so we're, we're getting the heat into it, right? Yeah, <laughs> and it's really soft because it's porcelain, so it's even softer than regular clay. And um, yeah, I was just gonna show you how to make a flower in a different way. Okay. Um, so I'll just like rip a little piece off and sort of yeah, it gets sticky, so you kind of want to like hit it and then flip it over. Yeah. Bracelet needs to go off, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So when you're in the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts residency program, I imagine that part of that is that supportive environment. Definitely. How, what does that look like? Um, yeah, just the sense of community, especially with ceramics. Um, I mean, with all art forms, but especially ceramics, because you can't really do it like by yourself. Um, it takes like a lot of work. Um, someone has to make clay. People have to load the kilns, unload the kilns. Um, there's such like a vast amount of information and like different technical things you can do that there's so much sharing of information and it's like, it just makes it so much easier when you have that community. And also just for inspiration when you come in the studio and you see people working on things and you're like, oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> like I would, yeah. I do that too. <laughs> yeah, you're like, that's so, yeah. But it's like so different than what you may be doing, but it's like, which is even cooler. and you get It's like kindred spirits yeah. or something, right? Yeah, and um, everyone's um, really friendly and there's like all sorts of people. There's people that are doing this like for almost like a career. They sell their work, they're like professionals and then there's people that have just started. There's like kids and teens that take classes. So just like the mixture of everyone and they make it like inclusive to include everyone in the community and so after I get it really thin I'm just gonna rip a piece off and just sort of curl, roll it up and it's really simple it makes a really sort of delicate looking but pretty strong flower shape. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty easy. That's pretty good, right? For a first Yeah, rose. that's really good. <laughs> yeah, and then that could be like a little rosebud or you could um, sort of just add some more and like while you're um, putting it around, just like squeeze the bottom. And then when I'm done, I sort of just squeeze the bottom part off. And then, that's pretty, that's good for, then I'll put the attaching slip on it, and then just stick it, stick it on there. Yeah, nice. Is really? Yeah. <laughs> Well, Lena, it has been so nice talking to you and learning all about ceramics. Um, it, your attitude and your outlook, it's just so exciting to be able to see. So thank you so much thank for you. taking the time to talk to me nice today. Nice talking to you too. The Kalamazoo Public Library is a city staple that offers a wide variety of resources, activities, and events to the community. Kayla L. tells us how they create programs that serve everyone 
and we get hands-on for Halloween with Pat Harrison, the Lord of the Gourd. So I'm here with the Lord of the Gourd. <laughs> nice to meet you, Lord it of the Gourd. It's very nice to meet you too. So uh, tell me what you're doing. First of all, where do you get the ideas like for some of these faces? Where do they come from? Honestly, most of it comes from the pumpkin itself because when I'm carving, I usually don't do your regular orange jack-o-lantern. I look for shapes. Right. It's the shape that inspires me, like this one I'm working on right now. I saw it had a flat side, so I knew it would stand like that, and it had this wonderful stem. So I decided to use the stem for a nose. I love that idea. <laughs> yeah, so I rarely ever do your regular pumpkin. They just, they don't talk to me like these do. And do you enjoy eating them once you carve them? <laughs> that would be like cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the children's room. Let's start there. The children's room is so exciting. It's bright, it's colorful. There are books everywhere, there are toys everywhere, but everything is organized and everything is easily accessible and the children just love it. I bet they do. When a family comes in looking for a particular kind of stimulation from a book, how do you kind of discern what it is that they need where you can steer them in the right direction? Usually it's because the variety of materials that are available is unknown to the average patron that comes in. Right. They're amazed when we tell them what's actually available. Um, in the children's area downstairs, one of our rooms is, has Alice in Wonderland uh, scenery painted all throughout the room. So you can have a small child that comes in who never heard Alice in Wonderland right. or who has never listened to that story or seen the movie. And they'll look at this artwork on the wall and they're thinking, wow, look at this, this is amazing. And then mom or dad or the librarian can say, well, you know, this artwork came from the book Alice in Wonderland. Have you ever read the book Alice in Wonderland? Yeah. Then we can take them to the shelf and give them that book. And it's just amazing to see how art in a book can come to life. I was going to say, it brings it to life. You read something, uh, I mean, you can travel somewhere in your mind. Exactly. And then you might come back in the fall or the spring or the summer and see an actual production of Alice in Wonderland. So that's one of the best things about the library is we can present this information, this art, this literature in any kind of format that we want to in print, in music, in acting, in art. Wow. It's great. So what are you going to show me? I'm going to try to okay. uh, try my hand at this. I am going to. And but you, 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 you said don't like mess it up because you worked really hard on well, this. Well, so. <laughs> I don't think you can mess this up. I have never <laughs> let anyone else touch my knives ever. So this <laughs> is the first, people. Okay. What I'm going to have you do is carve a tooth. And I'm going to do one and show you how I do it. Okay. So. Doing teeth is really, really simple. It's just a couple simple cuts. All I'm doing is a downward cut, right. like so. Right. And then the second cut is you just angle it along the cut line, and the piece pops right out. Oh, yeah. And then I'll go back that way, and I'll do it. And so that was just three little cuts, and we have a tooth. Yeah, and the thing is, is, is you have a lot of programs that kind of connect to the arts, which is yes. which is really important because kids love to have those kind of activities. What are some of those? Well, one of our long-standing programs is the Musical Storybooks, which is a partnership that we have with Kalamazoo Symphony Orchestra. They basically take a popular picture book and bring it to life with music, with their string quartet. So we do that every spring, every fall, and this fall we're going to be looking at a new book last stop on Market Street, so oh, that's wow. going to be fun. And they're going to introduce some new instruments as well. We also do programs with other community um, art organizations like the Bach Festival. Last spring they debuted Bach and Jammies at two of our branches, and so they will be coming back. And the Fontana Chamber uh, series, wow. uh, we bring that into the library as well. So are you okay. ready to try this? I'm ready this? to try. I'm ready okay. to try. Okay, so you just hold it, right? Yep, just hold it and just do a first cut as a downward cut, just straight down. You're you doing went, beautiful. You went, you you did it easier than that, okay. Okay, now you do your sideways cut. I think uh, he's got a really go. big gap in between that too. That's but. all right, I'm a gap tooth or two. <laughs> It's not coming out. <laughs> well, let's see here. Oh, you'll get it. Then try going straight down again and then angle it the other way. 
We this have, is way harder than it looks. We have pumpkin carnage going on. <laughs> there we here. go. Oh, there you go. You did it too. <laughs> See, it was that easy. Now, uh -huh. turn your blade sideways that way and round out that side. Over, over well, here? Well, yeah, come at it from the other side like this, if you can, here like so. Yeah, let's see. This is what I would do, is just kind of round it like that. <laughs> then you just get your own shape. Tell you <laughs> what, you did such a good job, I'm gonna let you do another one, but I'll start <laughs> it for you. Okay. So Kayla, can you share a little bit about the importance of the Kalamazoo Public Library just to the community as a whole? Well, you know, the public library is open access to all. You don't have to have a library card to come through the doors and utilize the services that we provide. And we have civic services that we provide to the community, like a law center. We have an Ask a Lawyer program where you can come in if you think you have some legal questions and get expert advice, and that's free. We also have uh, programs where we reach out to the community Say you're an artist and you need some place to display your art. Um, you can come to the library and you can say, I've created these pieces. We find a way to display your art. Many of our branches have galleries, like the Alma Powell branch has the Barnaby Gallery. And they're always letting local artists come in and display their artwork in a, in a format where they may not have that access, you know, with a gallery. So they can come into the library and do those things. So we keep in touch with our community by asking through surveys and just informal meetings what are some of the, the needs and the services that you would like to see us provide and then we provide those services. Is that why your programs are so versatile? Exactly. You know we want to serve the interest of everyone so we have STEM based programs for the science kids and we have art programs for those who are artistic and we have music programs for those kids that love music. You are now a professional pumpkin sculptor. And you saw it here fo <laughs> first, folks. Beautiful job, not bad, not bad. You deserve the instrument. <laughs> well, here, okay, I'll take the weapon back. Well, Kayla, I wanted to thank you so much for talking with me and sharing all the exciting things that are happening at the Kalamazoo Public Library. Well, thank, thank you for you. having me. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Kalamazoo Lively Arts. Tune in next week for more great artists and performances, and go online for more great content. We leave you tonight with a performance from a Michigander at the Blue Bridge Music Festival for Art Prize 9. I'm John Koch. Have a great night. These city limit signs are keeping me inside like prison walls that won't fall down. Well, I said that I would leave a year ago this week, but my heartstrings, they're still tied to this ground. But I'm still the same as I was. But I wish that I was gone Well, I lost another friend To the war again A prison with a pretty face Well, he said it would be fine but I said, just give it time, and now he's sleeping with those choices that he made. But I'm still the same as I was. But I wish that I was gone. I'm 
doing what I love Why you doing what you're told I know it's safe But I bet that's getting old So take your blinders off And see what you got And reach out and just take hold Reach out and just take hold Reach out and just take hold Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation, helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo.